Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to study double displacement reactions. First, to remind you, double displacement reactions have this general pattern. Have this generic pattern. A B plus C D. If we have two compounds react with each other, we call that double displacement reaction because we are going to change first part or first cation of each compounds. We are going to switch the cation of the ionic compounds. So to do this, we have A should be written here, AD plus, and we are going to write C here, we call that CB. So if you have two compounds react with each other, we are going to have double displacement reaction. One thing you should know, for double displacement reaction, like any other reactions, you need to apply solubility rules. Ionic compounds can be dissolved in water, we call them aqueous solution, and they may not dissolve in water, we call them insoluble solid. So we are going to apply the solubility rules to predict solubility of the products. In case in our double displacement reaction, we have two aqueous solution for our product side. One more time. If we have two aqueous solution on our product side, we call that no reaction. The reason, because we are not able to identify the products. Both are soluble. So that is why we cannot distinguish between them, so we call that no reactions. So let me work on a couple examples. Here, in this example, the first one, lithium bromide added to NaCl. So one compound added to another compound. We are going to work on product side. We need to switch the first part of each compound. Lithium must be written here. I'm going to write Li, Cl, Li group 1, Cl group number 7. We switch the charge, so we are going to have LiCl. And I'm going to rewrite Na here, Na, so Na1 positive and Br1 negative. As you see here, when we are going to switch Li and Na, we are going to switch one cation. So Li1 positive, group number 1, you know for cation, charge number, same as group number. Na group 1, 1 positive. So right now, I'm going to apply the solubility rules. LiBr group 1 elements make aqueous solution. NaCl group 1 elements make aqueous solution. I'm going to write product side. LiCl group 1 elements make aqueous solution, group 1 elements make aqueous solution, both aqueous solution, so we call that no reaction, so whenever we have two aqueous solution in product side, no reaction. How about this one? Question number two, this chemical reaction, lead to nitrate added to NaCl, please look here, all nitrate compounds, all nitrate compounds Soluble. I'm going to write aqueous. How to get that one? We always have solubility table for, your, for our exams. So no worries regarding that. So you just need to know how to use the solubility table to solve your problems like this example. So in other video, I already talked about solubility table and how to apply that one to get the solubility of the products. So this is one example lead to nitrate, all nitrates are soluble aqueous. NaCl group 1 element aqueous. So I'm going to write the product here. I'm going to write the products here. First, I need to switch this cation with another cation here. I'm going to switch them. So let's see how it works. Pb and Na should be switched. So I'm going to write Pb here, 
so it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if we have like this one here so let me change that one let me change that one to i so to make sure that we have some examples of iodine as well so we have pb i'm gonna write that one i here pbi2 pbi2 how to write that one so in this example pb has two positive charge because of pbno3 twice so pb has two positive charge and we switch that one and we wrote here iodine group number seven so when we switch the charge we have pbi2 pbi2 and we are going to write in a here in a here so in a and we are going to join in a by no3 in a group one one positive no3 one negative so as you see here we are going to switch the cation and we keep an ion here so in a and o3 at the end we need to determine the solubility of products group number one elements or all nitrates are aqueous and pbi2 if we look at the solubility rules if we have halogens pair with lead two always we have exception we have insoluble solid we call that s as you see here we have no aqueous aqueous we have aqueous and solid so we do have this reaction and we call this reaction precipitation reaction because we made this solid insoluble solid we call that precipitate and this reaction in general we call that precipitation reaction so we do have this reaction but for the first one because we have both aqueous aqueous we do not have this reaction and we call that nr no reaction so the reason we have no reaction because as you see here they are soluble in the water so we are not able to identify which one is kcl which one is nai both are aqueous in this reaction so we cannot say we do have reaction so we call that no reactions well, let me work on another example here assume that we have like this one calcium nitrate plus sodium chloride we are going to say do we have this reaction or not so one compound another compound you just need to switch the first part of each compound i'm gonna write calcium here so i'm gonna write calcium chloride plus and i'm gonna write sodium here sodium nitrate as you see here it doesn't matter you write sodium nitrate first and calcium chloride after that so in this example i wanted to give you the possible versions of writing to make sure you saw all of them so calcium chloride sodium nitrate so sodium nitrate sodium group number one aqueous calcium chloride calcium we don't have rule for this chloride gr group number seven halogens halogens are in general soluble except they pair with lead to silver so they are some exceptions but calcium is not exceptions so aqueous so i made aqueous aqueous so it means no reaction for this example let me work on another one let me work on another one silver acetate plus ammonium bromide i'm gonna work on this one 
silver acetate ammonium bromide you just need to switch the first part of these two compounds i'm gonna write silver here i'm gonna write silver bromide and i'm gonna write ammonium here ammonium acetate let me double check to make sure we have this reaction or not if we have ammonium all ammonium products are soluble or you may say all acetate compounds are soluble they, because of solubility rules so i write aqueous silver bromide silver bromide we are going to work on this one we don't have a rule for silver but we know that silver in general is exceptions we need to keep in mind regarding the silver lead and so on bromide halogens halogens if they pair with silver they make insoluble compounds so i'm gonna write solid silver acetate all acetates are soluble aqueous no exception ammonium make aqueous all ammonium products aqueous so aqueous aqueous make solid and aqueous we do have this reaction and we call this reaction precipitation reaction because this solid is precipitate right now i'm gonna write the formula for this reaction to make sure you review this example by different point of view silver acetate silver acetate c2h3o2 plus ammonium bromide in h4br I'm going to write aqueous, aqueous. So, silver bromide, I'm sure you can write the product formula based on the nomenclature NH4C2H3O2. Aqueous, and this one is solid. So, as you saw here, the only difference between these two is this part. I just switched AG and I wrote AG here and I wrote NH4 here. So we do have this reaction, we call that precipitation reaction because of this precipitate. So please keep in mind for double displacement reaction, we have one possible condition that we say no reaction. If the products both are aqueous. If products both are aqueous, we say no reaction and our double displacement reaction, it doesn't happen at all. Thank you for watching this video.